Okay, so if you haven't seen this one before, I just recommend you to go and do it. You won't regret it unless you hate football. In general, this is a TV show about a guy, Ted Lasso, who came to UK and he started coaching football without any previous experience. But if you go deeper, this show is actually far more than just football. It's about leadership, about helping other people to become, like Ted said, the best versions of themselves on and off the pitch. It's about people, relationships, communicating, achieving something together. So when I was looking at your verse, I noticed you have a line chart over here that has a gradient fill. And this is not typically something that you can do natively in Tableau. I did it with dual axis. So you just build a line graph and an area chart, then put them together. So to get this gradient effect, you will need Figma or Canva. And this gradient is actually the background image for my line chart. So hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Secrets of the Viz. Today I have Led in the house to talk about a very interesting Viz on Telesso, right? Yeah. So over to you to give a short intro about yourself and your Tableau journey so far. So okay, hi everyone. First of all, thank you for inviting me. It's a really interesting experience for me. A little bit about myself. I'm 27, currently living in Ukraine. I work as a data analyst in the biggest postal and logistics company of Ukraine called Nova Post. My journey in Tableau isn't that long. I think I started maybe a year and a half ago when I was going through Google Data Analytics certification. That's where I heard about Tableau for the first time. That's cool. Even though you have only one year of experience, your visas are pretty well designed. You have a lot of really cool dashboards. Like even for your first vis, it's spaced out really nicely. The design is minimalistic. The visual hierarchy is there and everything. H have you had like design experience or have you used other data visualization tools prior to Tableau? No, never. So Tableau is my first one, actually. I tried to do some basic things in Excel, but I mean, it, it's Excel. So, so you're a genius <laughs> in the making of prodigy. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> cool. Like, I love this one, the dynamic heat map with the football passes, I think. And it's really nicely done. Color scheme and it's a very unique way of showing a sports vis. Very rarely we see heat map with a thematic design around it. So you have a soccer field overlaid at the back. So I think this probably could have been a visit of the day as well. So this one yes. drove me crazy when I was building it because I didn't have a specific guideline. I just saw a viz from a data analyst from an Italian football club on Tableau Public. I don't remember the name of the guy. Maybe he's in the inspiration. And uh, yeah. That's the one. I saw one of his visits and I thought, okay, I want to build the same. But the problem was that I couldn't download it. And I had to put all the pieces I could find somewhere on the internet together and build it. And I'm still not sure if I did it right. I mean, it looks great. So I think you've probably done it right. Wait. <laughs> cool. So today we want to talk about one of your recent vis, which is Lead Like Lasso. Can you give us a quick intro about Ted Lasso? Because not everyone has seen the show. Okay, so if you haven't seen this one before, I just recommend you to go and do it. You won't regret it unless you hate football. In general, this is a TV show about a guy, Ted Lasso, who came to UK and he started coaching football without any previous experience. But if you go deeper, this show is actually far more than just football. It's about leadership, about helping other people to become, like Ted said, the best versions of themselves on and off the pitch. It's about people, relationships, communicating, achieving something together. It has a lot of relatable lessons that you can bring forth to your corporate life. So talk us a little bit on your inspiration, because I think this is a very consistent color scheme and design. Is this 
the colors that you got from the show itself or do you get your inspiration somewhere else? Actually, yes. There is the main top picture. I found it on the internet. I just changed it a little bit in Figma because the original poster said just one word, believe. And I had to find the same font and change it to my version with like Lasso. And yeah, I built my design around it. Okay, that's really cool. I love thematic designs like this. You have really good negative space around, so it's very easy to read through because it's not too overly complex and packed together. I know you have structured your vis uh, in lessons about leadership. What are your top lessons that you've learned from Ted? From Ted, I actually put them below, but you know, I try to use many of them at my working place. There is a phrase that I said it before, helping other people become the best versions of themselves on and off the pitch, on the working place and off the working place. It's about nurturing people, nurturing human potential. That's what I learned from Ted. Mm. I think that strikes a lot of resemblance to how the data fam community is. Have you been actively involved in like the community projects in the data fam? To be honest, no, I hear about those projects a lot because I have a lot of uh, contacts on LinkedIn of people who participate in those projects. And it's really interesting to watch. So just looking at your profile, you are quite a big fan of sports, right? Yeah. So there is a community project run by CJ Mice and a couple more, but they do have weekly data on different sports. They don't do just football you have all these other different spots and the data is in the github so if you're interested you can take a swing at one of these data sets and create visualizations they have quite a few really interesting ones like this is recent one that was done by one of the ambassadors rob taylor it's a really interesting riddle chart mm -hmm. so you have the riddle bar charts at the top and then you have kind of like a ranking line chart that goes up and down depending on their wins and losses for the team. But yeah, definitely check this out. I think this probably will be something that interests you quite a bit. Will do, will do. So when I was looking at your vis, I noticed you have a line chart over here that has a gradient fill. And this is not typically something that you can do natively in Tableau. I did it with dual access. So you just build a line graph and you take the same fields and you build an area chart, then put them together to have something like this. But the most difficult thing is this gradient. So to get this gradient effect, you will need some external instruments, Figma or Canva. Yeah. And on each sheet, this gradient is actually used as a background image for my line chart. When I look at this chart, I was really impressed because I didn't know that you can actually do it this way, but it's very unique because if we split this dual axis chart and take away the background field I'm in, you can see that essentially two different charts, like you said, mm -hmm. reverse chart and the line chart over here. So this is the lesson tree, and this is essentially just a gradient fill of a picture, which yeah. you probably did it in Figma, right? Yeah, that's was what was created in Figma. Yeah. And the trick to this is when you do a dual axis and synchronize it, this overlays on top of the line chart. And because the background image color is the same as this one, kind of creates that illusion that the gradient field is just going from the line chart, but in actual fact, there's a mask on top of it. So I thought this was really ingenious. Did you come up with this technique by yourself or did you read about it somewhere? To be honest, I didn't come up with this by myself. There is a YouTube channel called Golden Insight, and there is a girl who's talking about different Tableau techniques. You can check it out. She builds some incredible things. You know, she's building neon line charts, gradient line charts, uh, interesting variations of donuts and so on. Just great. And I learned a lot from this girl. You know what? I actually looked at this video before 
I wanted to do a visualization on it, but I think I just plucked it at the back of my head and <laughs> forgot about it. Totally yeah. fine. We go through so much content every day, so we just exactly. easily forgot these things. Yeah, but this is evidence that I actually watched <laughs> the video. Almost till the end, you see? <laughs> Almost to the end. I also put this link in the podcast description so everyone can take a look at this. This is really great content. Are there any challenges when you were building this face? Because I know you tried to combine the insights from a personality test. I know you got it from the Workplace 2024 report. Was it mm -hmm. hard to extract data and refactor it for your vis? The hardest thing was to find the right data because I uh, was watching this uh, TV show for the fourth or the fifth time, I, I don't know, and I just got inspired and thought, okay, that would be nice to tell people about those lessons that they can use at their working places here with any team. But if I just tell about these lessons, put some pictures on the background, it wouldn't be different from a simple PowerPoint presentation. And I thought, okay, I need some data to back this up. After a little bit of research, I found that there is a company called Galoop. I hope I pronounced that right. And they have just a ton of useful stuff. First of all, every year they do hundreds of articles on their website. So you can learn so much about working places around the world. Was this the one? Yep. That's the, it was uh, the most difficult thing was to find the right data, to find valid source, not some Excel file that was living on the internet. Data preparation was not that hard because they already have aggregated data. So you just have to work with a few lines, a few columns for each visualization. So you were saying that you were trying to match up the statistic for kind of the leadership traits that you have identified from the show. How hard was it to do that matchmaking? Uh, sometimes it was pretty hard because there were moments when I felt like I'm forcing it. I had a lesson and I had the data and I wasn't sure if the data was the right match. And I was asking myself constantly, okay, what am I doing? Is it the right data or not? Am I forcing it or not? Am I honest? or not, because I wanted to have a lesson and a great real world data that backs this up. Not just because I want to say so, because there is a real data. Sometimes it was complicated. That's cool. I think this is really interesting. Is there anything else that you are working or this idea that you're exploring that you want to tease the audience? Uh, mm -hmm. What's next? I don't know, to be honest, because when I work with visualizations, uh, there are two most difficult things for me. The first one is the actual idea, because if you don't have the right idea, you just don't want to work in it. The second most difficult thing is the color palette. It drives me crazy every time. <laughs> I always visit Tableau Public to see what people build. And once I get inspired, I think I will be on it. Right now I go through the next level Tableau training with Andy Kribble mm -hmm. and we learn so many uh, things there. So much difficult stuff that I couldn't even imagine that it was possible in Tableau. So once I'm ready, I will use them. Cool. So it's been really great talking to you, Valet, on your vis. I think this is a very inspiring journey for people to notice because you only spent one year in Tableau and you have built so many amazing verses. Uh, I can't wait to see what you do in the next couple of months and next year. I hope everyone learned something from this and we'll see everyone at the next episode. Thank you. Thank you for having me.